drive next to us and I'll get a few shots? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Audi RS7 Performance. Straight away, let's open the engine bay because most of the action lies in here. More power, more torque. Beautiful Audi logo says RS right here. V8 of course, the badging is also given. There's no space here at all because the engine is huge. There's insulation there of course and you get gas struts as well. In this Nardo grey colour, it looks absolutely phenomenal. The lights are really very nice. They swipe in from the inside to the outside because these are dynamic swipe indicators. They look lovely, the lights are amazing. You obviously get headlight washers as well. This is not functional. They actually thought of making this functional, but then they realized in the wind tunnel that there's no use of having this open. So they closed it. You get front parking sensors. You get a towing hook here. It says RS7. This thing has been blackened out. In fact, the Audi logo is also blackened out if you opt for that option, of course. There's a camera right here. And these are the panels for the radar. So it gets ADAS, of course. And the ground clearance is like really very low. It is a phenomenal looking car. This is the RS7 Performance, which is the more performance oriented version of the RS7, which is actually a more performance oriented version of the S7, which is actually a more performance oriented version of the A7, which basically is the sport back version of the A6. It has 22 inch wheels, and these wheels are actually 5 kgs lighter, which means that the car is now 20 kgs lighter. 285, 30, 22s, red colored brake calipers. You can opt for gray, you can opt for blue as well. And look at the size of the disc. You can also opt for carbon ceramic discs, which are again lighter by 34 kgs. Absolutely crazy. Ground clearance is low, but you can actually increase the ride height as well because it has air suspension, of course. Rear tire size is the same. Obviously, brakes are smaller here. Says RS there on the red colored brake caliper. Beautiful looking alloy wheels. They're really, very stunning. The alloy wheel design is so good. Now, I really love it. And then you get a spoiler, which retracts. So yes, with a touch of a button, you can open or close it as well. Got multiple parking sensors because it has got self-park function too. This is the rear fog light. That is the reverse parking camera. Beautiful lights, connected lights, of course. Dynamic swipe indicators at the rear as well. These exhausts are very much real. You can hear the exhaust quite loud right now. But it obviously has a soft limiter. Straight away, let's actually open the boot of the vehicle and obviously, it has the power function. Boot is actually 523 liters in terms of size. And then you have this sun blocker as well. This thing also blocks the sun from the upper side. And there is no spare wheel right here, but yeah, puncture repair kit and all that has been given in the boot. A 12 volt charging socket, a nice touch of course. Let me press a button and there it shuts. Now, if you notice this thing, you can remove. Obviously you get tinted glass here in the United States for the rear windows and as well as the windscreen. Shark fin antenna, which is quite small. And this is where the fuel actually goes in. Space at the rear seems decent. I love these seats. RS badging, no adjustable headrest. For the center passenger, obviously there is an adjustable headrest, but these sporty seats are really nice and comfortable. Space is decent. It's not too much, but it's not too bad either. And I support is poor. This is scooped out a bit. Not really hard plastic. Magazine holder has been given. AC controls given right here because obviously four zone climate control, air conditioning, two USB-C charging sockets, a cigarette lighter, AC vent placement here, AC vent placement here, hook here, and there's a hook as well as a handle right there. It says airbag, height adjustable seat belts at the front, and then you get a center armrest with twin cup holders as well. So yeah, this is quite practical in that regard. Isofix child seat mounts. The seat belts get this red treatment and the dashboard looks lovely. Very similar to other Audi cars. You get the same screens. It gets the soft closed door function. So here, it actually pulls it inside to shut it. Request sensor is there on all the doors, of course. This car really looks beautiful. This color really suits it. You obviously get lane keep assist, rain sensors and all that. So there you can see are the sensors and the cameras. This is the chassis number of the vehicle. And this is the heads up display, of course. Camera here as well. How many cameras? Audi is like, yeah, we will put one wherever you want. Seats are really nice and comfortable at the front. RS seats, of course, and has this red stitching as well. I love the seats, they are fantastic. I press a button and there you can see the seats are moving. The steering wheel is moving as well because memory function is given. So you've got two memory settings as well. You can adjust the under thigh support, it says RS7 here. At night, it actually projects RS7 somewhere on the floor as well. 
Door pockets are decent size. Bang and Olsen audio system. You get a dead pedal, you get a secret storage here. And of course, light controls as well. The interior is fantastic because there's a lot of Alcantara which has been added yeah, everywhere, Alcantara. This is a 10.1 inch screen. This is an 8.6 inch screen. And that is a 12.3 inch screen, which right now has the RS runway cluster, which looks fantastic. You get acceleration measurement, lap timer and whatnot. Let me get out of this because this is the one I really like. Usual Audi screen, which has haptic feedback, which can shut, of course. Fantastic to use. There, you can hear tuck. Sound also comes. Here, I'm going to change the cluster display. Get into Audi virtual cockpit, RS performance, and change now, which is sort of a hockey stick thingy. Has the RS badging right here. Steering wheel is nice to hold. You have the RS button here as well. And obviously, Alcantara has been put almost everywhere. It's quite a practical cabin because there are twin cup holders here. There's a cigarette lighter here. Electric parking brake, auto hold function, some buttons here, but could do with a lot more physical buttons. This is the button actually to open or close the rear spoiler, self park button. Air conditioning is actually a chiller. You get, yes, the usual 30 colors for the ambient lighting. It's a bit complex, this whole thing to operate, but it gets heat heating and ventilation. So the button is here. This is for heating, this is for ventilation. Right now it is burning hot. I am just freezing. No, I'm not freezing, I'm just melting right now. This is the reverse parking camera. Obviously, it's a 360 degree parking camera. You see, it's also moving when you turn the steering wheel. It gets adaptive guidelines. And then you have got a 3D view as well, which looks fab. Look at this. The car is stunning. I really love the RS7. I think it's an amazing looking car. Let's get into settings and then I will get back. It's, like I told you, it's a little complex to operate this. Now you see how many steps I had to actually take to reach here. So this could be a lot better. Some storage space here with a wireless charging pad as well. It says Quattro just in case you forget which car you're driving. But a car this expensive does not get a sunroof. A sunroof is not available in this particular car. It's actually available in some markets. But in Germany, this car is German spec. Sunroof is actually optional. Yeah, that's kind of surprising. Rest is the same as other Audi cars. So let's start driving right away. And it says, welcome to RS7 performance. Let's turn on the car. See, it is moving ahead. It says passenger airbag is on and the sound, the Audi sound also comes in. Let's just continue here. Straight away, I'm going to put it into RS mode right here, RS1. I can't actually see what's below. So I'm going to get into RS2 by pressing this once again. Yeah, we are in RS2 and there ESC is on sport. Then only launch control works. Otherwise, launch control does not work. When you turn off ESC, you can do that. By the way, pre-sense is off, which is the ADAS systems, of course. We straight away get into drive, which automatically puts me into sport mode as well. We get into settings. We turn on the RS monitor, which is not in settings. It's actually in vehicle. I keep fumbling with all this, so it's not very intuitive. They could have had buttons here just to help me make a quicker and more informed decision of what exactly I want with the vehicle. And let's straight away get going which means that it is obviously time for launch, which means left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, launch control active. No, no, launch control did not get activated because I did not hold on to the brake for long. So you have to actually give it some time for launch control to actually get activated. But trust me, performance is absolutely brilliant. This car pulls very nice and strong. There's so much punch on offer now. I love it. In fact, I think I've tried launching almost eight, nine times and every time I fumbled here or there since there's nobody around here. As it lights on, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, launch control program. Finally, ho ho ho! Performance is unbelievable. So this is of course a four-liter bi-turbo V8 engine, which is producing 630 PS of power. Quite a lot, huh? 850 Newton meters of torque. Again, quite a lot, but not as much as say plug-in hybrid vehicles right now, like the Mercedes AMG GT63 SE Performance Bi-Turbo V8 4Matic Plus. Oh no, that's such a long name. Half the video got over taking the name of that Mercedes car. So it is now upgraded in terms of the output by 30 PS and 50 Newton meters because they've given it a bigger turbocharger. They've increased the boost pressure and they've also remapped the engine. The result is obviously more power, more torque. And the other change is that it has a more compact center differential, which is self-locking, of course. That one is lighter, it's more responsive and controls understeer to a better extent. Otherwise, four-wheel drive cars like this Quattro is prone to understeer near limit. But this one is a bit playful. If you go really fast now, then it's going to slide. It is not going to understeer, it's actually going to slide. 
which is wonderful you can turn off traction control nothing's going to happen because it's still not going to spin the wheels as quattro is amazing firstly it channels 40% power to the front of course rear 60% and then it can channel up to 70% power to the front wheels and up to 85% to the rear wheels and this one's also got the sport differential because the RS7 performance the performance version which is equivalent to BMW's competition comes standard with the dynamic package which increases the top speed from 250 km per hour all the way to 280 km per hour also adds in rear wheel steering which by the way turns up to 5 degrees at lower speeds in the opposite direction to virtually reduce the wheel base thereby making the car more maneuverable at higher speeds it changes in the same direction as the front wheels by up to 2 degrees to elongate the wheel base and improve the high speed stability high speed stability is absolutely fantastic yaar what a car unbelievable so this car looks absolutely sexy look at the sound of the engine i mean you can't look you can hear the sound of the engine but listen to this gearbox shifts really fast in spite of the fact that this is actually a torque converter it's not a dual clutch yet it's so fast with shifts i don't know why audi didn't go to porsche and say give us the pdk we want to use the dual clutch in our car they like no we use a torque converter no problem at all porsche obviously has the pdk part of the same group so they could have put dual clutch here as well but no torque converter which gets the job done it's fast with shifts you get manual control as well i just push the gear selector to the right and now i have manual mode which means that it will hold on to a gear it's quite aggressive with downshifts okay listen to this yeah because we are in rs mode right now i'm going to get come out of it there you can see the hockey stick cluster or the tachometer now esc is on and now it will give me manual control so here i'm going to shift to first gear oh my god i think the car is in the mind of its own it will not it's not giving me manual control somehow it's kind of funny yeah usually it does that so there's some setting thing by the way this car looks absolutely brilliant with the doors open with the windows down of course because it has got yes one thing we're going to stop here so it has actually got frameless doors okay we get into rs mode we'll get into rs2 because then i will be able to have launch control and straight away it's time for launch yet again left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator come on dude okay manual sport Yeah, activated. Oh, 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 oh. Trust me on this. The performance of this car really blows your mind. It's the level of precision it has, which really makes you fall in love with the RS7. It's a car which gobbles up the miles like nothing ever else seen. Whatever am I talking? I mean, my English is completely going for a toss because this car is so fast. Now you have to really concentrate, and then obviously it changes the heads-up display as soon as you get into RS mode. So that also changes. You get this uh, hockey-style display there for the tachometer, which is fantastic. stick oh the sound could be better in spite of the fact that they've actually removed insulation from this car why would they do that simply because they wanted the car to sound better so they've actually gone ahead and removed some insulation from the front behind the engine and also from the front of the exhaust so like in the cabin side they've removed a lot of insulation so that you can hear a lot more inside the cabin doesn't really work because it gets double glazed windows so you can't really hear much inside the cabin it's very silent as such in the top end a bit of sound can be heard but it needs to be louder which unfortunately it is not by the way this car is now a five seater earlier it used to come as a four seater but they have gone for a five seater configuration and the rival is the mercedes cls which is getting discontinued this year because mercedes is like we need more production space for the new e class so cls is gone unfortunately which means that this car actually rivals the mercedes e63 amg which is fantastic as well but this one feels way better in terms of grip and practicality grip levels are fantastic thanks to the quattro system or obviously four wheel drive has come to mercedes and bmw as well but the way audi has managed to tune the four wheel drive system is just so much better yeah they do such a better job in tuning the four wheel drive system because there is always so much grip on offer now this car gets sport differential as standard at the rear axle which actually translates to better transmission of power between the rear wheels and because the tires are so wide now trust me on this there is always so much grip the big tires with low profile obviously don't feel that good on bad roads so you can feel a lot of the bumps yeah you can feel those but overall ride is good when on good roads and performance is absolutely amazing here standard top speed 250 km per hour for the RS7 sportback this RS7 performance which is also the sportback actually has a higher top speed of 280 km per hour how is that possible it comes with the dynamic package as standard which gives it three things rear wheel steering of course the higher top speed 280 km per hour and sport rear differential but 
you can boost the speed to 305 kilometers per hour why would you want to do that for bragging rights or otherwise if you stay in germany and you can drive on the german autobahn then that additional 25 kilometers per hour will go a long way in justifying the rupees 10 lakhs or 8000 euros which you have to pay additional for the same now, that's a lot of money but trust me worth it if you're driving on the german autobahn because at times when you're driving there even at 300 kilometers per hour someone's going to flash you from behind and tell you please move aside i want to go faster than you such things also happen so that's the reason i would suggest you opt for that package if you're getting the rs7 but that package also brings in another thing which is carbon ceramic brakes 34 kgs lighter and better stopping power only thing is that carbon ceramic brakes don't work well when the temperature is cold so you need to warm up a bit these performance tires also offer better grip but mainly when you're driving it in the wet in the dry obviously really nice grip in the wet improved grip now and i just love playing with the paddles yeah there are a lot of drive modes there's six drive modes there's efficiency and in efficiency mode now this stop start system which is come 48 volt mild hybrid it does two things firstly it helps in activating the stop start system up to a speed of 20 kilometers per hour that's kind of aggressive and then it also engages the coasting function engages the coasting function actually we are at a height right now i think we have climbed somewhere so my ears have closed and i'm not able to talk properly but what i'm trying to tell you is it can coast up to a speed of 160 kilometers per hour turning off the internal combustion engine when you're coasting at up to speeds of 160 kilometers per hour that is a lot that means that you can comfortably drive this car without drinking fuel so greta thunberg gives us a thumbs up for this particular feature in the rs7 by the way it will shut two three five eight cylinders so basically the cylinder number two three five and eight out of the eight cylinders so four cylinders are shut off to improve the fuel efficiency of the car on light engine load so yes it's got cylinder deactivation audi likes to call it as active cylinder technology which obviously helps to improve the fuel efficiency of this car it has a 73 liter fuel tank and it actually will return a fuel efficiency of around four to eight kilometers per liter depending on your driving style if you drive it like sanely like how i am right now like i am so easy going with the throttle then the efficiency will obviously improve but if you go a little nuts okay you get hard onto the throttle then expect three kilometers per liter like if you do something like this you noticed it immediate it's very immediate with a downshift so gearbox is fantastic it's got adas of course and it's got lane keep assist it's got forward collision warning it's got automatic emergency braking all of that is there everything works very nice so there's efficiency mode there's dynamic mode there's auto mode and then i started to forget which other mode thank you <laughs> for the altitude comfort mode is then rs1 and rs2 which is so copied from bmw's m which is m1 and m2 so basically rs stands for rent sport which in german which i mean which translates to race sport it actually helps you make a lot of changes to the engine the gearbox to the differential as well as the esc system and the sound as well and it actually has artificial sound coming inside the cabin yeah that fake sound really gets to you but that has been added just so that people can enjoy inside listening to fake stuff which i don't encourage at all so they could have made the car louder still but then all these norms and all now they really mess up things obviously it's got active exhaust so when you get into higher mode it'll open the exhaust valve and then obviously become louder as well and unfortunately although i'm burning a lot of fuel right now there's a prius right ahead of that toyota which is kind of making me feel pukish right now i hate the toyota prius it's like a really terrible car but anyways 48 volt mild hybrid system the next generation of the rs7 is definitely definitely going to have a plug-in hybrid system which means torque will be more than 1000 freaking newton meters which is going to be a lot crazy and then i expect this to go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in under three seconds right now it's 3.4 seconds 0 0.2 Two seconds shaved off from the 3.2 second time it was there earlier. Zero to 200 kilometers per hour will come up in just 11 and a half seconds, which is brutally quick. Doesn't hesitate. It keeps pulling, 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 pulling. It is actually 40 mm wider than the A7, which is actually based on the A6 and the A. I've already told you all this again in the starting of the video. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the A6 spawns so many cars like the S6, the RS6, the A7, the S7, the RS7, and everything is underpinned by the MLB Evo platform. Fantastic platform. Fantastic car. Really a mile much. and it's quite expensive as well yeah abroad obviously it's more than 1 crore rupees in india it will cost more than 2 crore rupees because of all the taxes and stuff like that made in germany of course so no sunroof but because it's made in germany this car has a couple of high visibility jackets as well because it's mandatory to have high visibility jackets here i love the steering i love everything about this car i only wish that there was more sound on the inside it would be more raw that would make it real fun and then i am also waiting for more power yeah 630 horsepower is still not quench my thirst because i'm like we want more the engine is really amazing but amgs are more raw and m cars are specifically speaking the m5 competition of the 4.4 liter v8 engine in bmw's m cars are really 
actually very quick in terms of response but you can't underestimate this car it's amazing so guys this is my vlog of the audi rs7 sportback performance unbelievable car what a fantastic vehicle what an amazing experience driving it in california it's hot but so is the car if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's the like button and oh gearbox went for a toss give it a thumbs up like comment bye bye